The firm very often and unfortunately receives phone calls whether we can help someone who has been sexually assaulted or worse, raped on a cruise ship. The first category is a crew member's sexual assault or rape on a passenger. That is governed by maritime law and there's a, what's referred to as strict liability. There's no need to prove that the cruise line either knew or should have known that one of their employees had a propensity to act in this way. You simply have to prove that the event occurred. The other also involves sexual assault and rape, but it's not necessarily by a crew member on a passenger. It could be a passenger on a passenger. In certain instances, there are indicators that the cruise line should have been aware of that may have alerted them to the fact that this grievous harm could be perpetrated by a, a passenger on a cruise ship against the passenger. One of the most exacerbating circumstances that bring about these horrible results is the excess service of alcohol. Almost every single case we've handled uh, where a passenger has been sexually assaulted or raped by another passenger involves the excess service of alcohol and it can result in a very, very dangerous and predictable set of circumstances where a passenger can be the victim of a sexual assault or rape on the cruise ships. Those are cases that we treat very, very seriously because a person's dignity and who they are has been robbed of them.